Are you ready? Everything, yes, everything is Gamergate. Oh, f my soy. Everything is Gamergate. You may not have known it, history might not have ever recorded it, but every bad thing that has happened since 2014 has been you filthy Gamergaters. And it's time for the truth to surface. Vox, what we still haven't learned from Gamergate, seven years later. In the wake of the storming of the U.S. Capitol on January 6th by Trump supporters, bystanders on social media had plenty to say about the root causes and contributing factors that may have led to this flashpoint. Among these was Gamergate, the year-long harassment campaign from 2014 to 2015 that eventually became subsumed into the greater rise of the alt-right movement online. End quote. That's right. Gamergate caused the U.S. Capitol to be stormed, seven years after you nihilists waged war on a beloved and upstanding community of journalists. Oh, What's that? Don't like being called a nihilist, do you? Too bad. Quote from Ryan Broderick, formerly of BuzzFeed, before being fired for plagiarism, though it was probably just plagiarized from some Gamergate chud, so that's fine, but I digress. Quote, our Wall Street bets users noticed that Citron was shorting GameStop and, because they're all radicalized post-Gamergate nihilists, decided to bet against Citron simply out of spite. This isn't the first time that Wall Street Bets has deployed a large-scale 4chan-style astroturfing campaign on the stock market. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission investigated the subreddit over insider trading allegations in 2017. The subreddit's users have basically figured out how to work together as a community to rearrange the raw source code of capitalism into a shitty video game. The result is a cascade of speculation bubbles on random nonsense. Kind of like Wall Street. End quote. More, more, yes, we need more from my rational, professional, and credible brothers and sisters, please, so that these awful video game player minds might understand, finally. From Jill E. Hughes on Twitter, go get em, sister. Gamergate was a psyop conducted in cyberspace against women in the gaming world using psychological micro-targeting metrics obtained via Facebook and other social media platforms. Yes, yes it was, you are correct. Now from PBS, quote, When Brianna Wu, a former game developer who was harassed online during the 2014 hashtag Gamergate controversy saw the U.S. Capitol attack unfold, she said her first thought was that everything I tried to get the FBI to act on in the aftermath of Gamergate has now come true, end quote. Still from PBS, Paragon of Social Progress, quote, We told people that if social media companies like Facebook and Reddit did not tighten their policies about these communities of organized hate, that they were going to see violent insurrection in the United States. We told people that these communities were organizing online for violence and extremism. That, unfortunately, has proven to be true. End quote. Mm. Mm. Yes. From the esteemed Kathy Griffin, Quote, hey, techie, smarty pants followers of mine, do you think what happened with my Trump photo scandal being such an international overblown outrage could have been because of this Gamergate thing I'm just learning about? End quote. The answer is clear, in my opinion. Of course. You holding a replica severed head of a sitting United States president whom 75 million people supported at that time was only a scandal. Only, purely, only, just because of the fact that Gamergate existed. The truth will one day be known. Now from Anti-Fash Gordon, whose social media biography heroically states, quote, I expose fascists, get them fired, dehomed, kicked out of school, etc. As he should, it's the Lord's work. He lays bare the reality of how everything, everything is Gamergate. Quote, let's talk about the New York Times firing editor Lauren Wolf and rise of the alt-right starting in 2014 with Gamergate. Wolf tweeted that she had chills on Inauguration Day. The right predictably spun up an outrage cycle and Wolf was fired. To some of us, this looked a lot like Gamergate, a misogynistic harassment campaign whereby a collection of creeps and incels pretended that they were the victims of a liberal gaming press and leveraged that position to attack feminists. End quote. That's exactly what Gamergate was. In totality, nothing more, nothing less. That is what a gamer is, and our righteous brothers and sisters in arms must fight back using the collective power of our trembling soprano voices on Twitter. From Jeff Yang, columnist for CNN, citing Ro Khanna. I'm so glad this comes from my beloved heroes at CNN. I am struck by the term digital soldier. Who would have thought that 10 years after helping support democratization in the Arab Spring, social media would be facilitating digital soldiers who attacked our capital? End quote. The addendum. Literally anyone who followed Gamergate. It's comforting knowing that we have voices from CNN to give us this truth.
Branching out to our individual assets on the ground in this never-ending righteous fight, at the Zero Virus, an extremely stable, rational human being, quote, for context, the far right exploded in size because a dude claimed his ex-girlfriend slept with a games journalist to get a positive review, and white nationalist opportunists used that as a launch point for the alt-right, which directly led to Trump's election, which mishandled COVID. That's right, Gamergate. You heard it here. Gamergate caused death by COVID. On the subject of Trump, it must be addressed by Scott Maynor, a people's hero, quote, I'm convinced that if we would have properly addressed the Gamergaters when they were a thing, Trump would not be in office today, end quote. That's astute, a very astute observation because the supermajority of Trump's voting base does secretly frequent gaming media forums and hang on to gaming journalist grievances from seven years ago, which then tells them this Trump guy who openly states that video games cause violence and should be examined more closely, which is an asinine perspective, which is my entire portal into this voting block to begin with, apparently. Well, yeah, he's the president for me because, because of Gamergate. His base definitely isn't just middle-class America who largely doesn't even care what video games are. And I'm glad, finally, someone has put the pieces together that Gamergate caused Donald Trump. Lastly, and most importantly, Joanna Robinson, senior writer at Vanity Fair. I like this one because it's nondescript. It's very useful. It could apply to anything. It should apply to everything because as we now know, and you Gamergaters must now see, Gamergate causes everything bad to happen. January 6th, 2021, starting the year off with clarity, quote, I think all the time about what might have been different if people had taken Gamergate and specifically the female targets of Gamergate more seriously, more seriously, ripples upon ripples, end quote. Okay, all right, I'm done. That's just a few examples of the everything was caused by Gamergate crowd, and I thought it would be fun to do it that way instead of a really dry analytical approach talking about each one individually and why it's absurd or stupid or totally ridiculous because it's pretty damn obvious at this point. But now for the second half. Gamergate was a 2014 clash between gaming media and players slash forum posters all over the internet. It was largely sparked by a post in which a quid pro quo was claimed between a developer and a writer. The developer is Zoe Quinn, who then went on to launch a Kickstarter for her erotic game with a financial goal of 69420. This game would succeed in funding for an amount of around $85,000, and she promptly went silent, only to post years later, in 2018 I believe, that she was out of money, the game was paused, while literally vacationing in Japan and bragging about how great her life was. The writer during all of this, allegedly offering up favorable coverage to her during the Gamergate fiasco, for romantic involvement, apparently, is the allegation, is still employed at Kotaku. And overall, Gamergate was a giant nothing. But don't take my word for it, because this is an international scandal, mind you, which made it before the UN, actually, and is referenced as the flashpoint for world events, both civil and financial, seven years later. So yeah, don't take my word for it alone. The FBI released a semi-redacted 172-page document detailing their Gamergate investigation. Yes, the FBI investigated it. Yes, it made it to the UN. And yes, it was a giant pile of nothing. The report shows a couple of threats far from the mountain that was, and still is to this very day, constantly claimed to have been sent, a veritable tsunami of harassment and death threats. And for the most part, they contained meme language and internet message board slang, as well as correspondence that inferred events which could not have actually occurred because the threat was received after the engagement it pertained to had already been publicly canceled, I believe. Furthermore, when visiting a primary individual behind the repeated phone calls, it was a juvenile who had been trolling excessively, and they were warned to stop by the official FBI investigators. In addition, a disconnected event of identity fraud occurred to a third-party executive at Intel, yes, the technology company, which prompted them to donate a bunch of money to diversity projects and get away from the entire debacle as fast as they could. Additionally, it's worth noting that the FBI very pointedly cautioned against people going to the media about the trolling they received or the investigation the FBI was doing at the time regarding Gamergate, because it would only serve to exacerbate the situation, but that's actually profitable to do, so that advice clearly fell on deaf ears. Also, as a side note, in 2016, 10% of the entire US population experienced identity theft in the prior 12 months. That's 30 million people. So yeah, I don't know why we're taking this particular shit to the UN. I guarantee you that I received far more threats and harassment, however you want to categorize that or whatever lens you want to look through, after my Last of Us 2 review than this entire FBI report catalogs, minus the identity theft. 
And I didn't get to speak at the UN because it's not that serious. If Gamergate caused Trump's election and the GameStop Wall Street gamma short squeeze or the Capitol riots or whatever else, my Last of Us 2 review is about to cause World War V. We just don't know it yet. Now, this requires precise clarity because YouTube is on a banning spree lately and I'm not keen to be on that chopping block. Do not ever, none of you ever, go out of your way to harass anybody and make a point, even when trolling and thinking that it's innocuous and not serious because all it does is give them ammunition. Read this psychological paper right here about a tendency to seek out interpersonal victimhood and understand that these people should be avoided. Nothing more, nothing less. Of course, it's hypocritical for me to say that while publicly, likely with tens of thousands of views on the video, discussing these very same individuals and circumstances, but I thought it might be a decent video to come out and say, hey, I know that a great many people are painting with very broad strokes and demonizing huge swaths of the gamer population right now with extreme vitriol, but not everyone thinks that way. Don't stress it, you didn't cause the planet to explode, regardless of what they might pretend. That's it though. It was just half of a meme video. I've really just been watching the GME, AMC, like stock market stuff lately, and it's just incredible. So I'm a little bit distracted, forgive me. Half analytical explanation about what the FBI really found and I don't know, whatever, it was kind of a new format. And why Gamergate is not the root cause of all evil, even though they're just dialing up that kind of vitriol lately, man, they're really going hard on it. But now it's time for the links. First and foremost, please go check out Odyssey. It's a great platform, super rewarding for its creators, like much more than YouTube. It's an alternative to YouTube, really good stuff. So yeah, click the link down below. Locals as well, which is a Patreon alternative and better than that platform. If you wanna keep the channel going despite demonetization and other crap like that, Locals is absolutely the best way. There's the other social media, another YouTuber to check out, link there as well. Merch, Amazon affiliate, tons of stuff, like just all the shill stuff that YouTubers always push whatever it is, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed a bit of comedy. It's, I'm not really used to doing it. Hopefully it went well. Have a nice night.